Hey did everyone, Juan Romero here from Switchwatch and I'm back with another review. This is Narita Boy on the Nintendo Switch and boy oh boy am I excited to tell you about this one. Now before we get into the gameplay I want to start off with the story. I went into this not expecting very much at all. I always tend to have that mindset when my next project comes along because I don't want to get overhyped for something and then be disappointed. Also when I'm going in not expecting anything the feeling of surprise is all the more fulfilling when you know absolutely nothing. So this is a double-edged sword for you my wonderful viewers out there. You can make a choice, you can carry on and watch this review till the very end, but be warned there will be some small spoilers, it is inevitable when making a review, although I try my very best to limit them, or you can take these words and run. Buy this game, don't look back, and enjoy my friends, and then come back and let me know how you found it. How was that for a review? We're finished. For those of you that are easily pleased for the rest, let's get on with it as my rambling is going to go on and on otherwise. Now, that story, as a genius in the 80s, they make a console called the Narita One, and the flagship game is Narita Boy. It quickly becomes the best-selling game of all time, with its power fantasy setting and the wielding of that techno sword, taking players on a journey like no other. No doubt then this is the dream the development team and publisher actually had and it's ironic because I think they do have a real smash hit on their hands here and I can tell that this is not like any other indie you will have played. You see the digital code connects with reality. Him has returned deleting the creator's memories. The Narita Boy protocol has therefore been activated and this is where you come in. I wasn't prepared for this journey I have to tell you. The way the story is written within the game it kept me wanting to read every single text box the NPCs had to offer me but it was the revelations of the memories which told a rich and deep touching story one of family loss sadness and triumph a journey about life and with each memory revealed told through words and settings which you walk through as the character the story was bloody hard hitting let me tell you vivid it made me want to play till the very end and discover everything. I don't want to spoil it because a journey you need to discover for yourselves, but it's one well worth taking. It was a great motivation, powerful purpose to see it through, but that's all well and good having an inspiring story to play towards and discover, but does that mean that the gameplay matches this story being told? You're damn right it does. This is not only one of the most epic indie games I've played, but as an experience this comes together so beautifully. First thing you'll notice is the fluidity. Now sure this comes under visuals and performance in our reviews, but the fluidity of this product lends itself to the fantastic action you will come across very quickly. It's an action adventure game with platforming, battles, boss battles, exploration and puzzles to solve as well as secrets to find and you know that there is something really special about this the moment you hear the opening theme tune but then with a controller in your hand you move Narita Boy about you jump across a few platforms walk from screen to screen to each new room and so far so platformer type game but then something special happens you pick up the techno sword And with your first skill, this is to merely swipe that beautiful beast through a foe and marvel at how wonderful that swipe felt. What usually disappoints me about games like this is they often lack in an area, for example, enemies. They don't have enough variety and you see repeats time and time again. And although that happens here, it's much less frequent. There are so many differing kind of foes giving you different things to think about that it just makes those battles intense, keeping you on your toes. And what I love is each new skill you unlock, there'll be an enemy which will have a weakness to that move. And for example, you'll come across the skeletons with shields. Just before that, you will have unlocked shoulder barge. And as the game so cleverly does, it will give you a little tutorial with each unlocked skill getting you used to things. To get the skelly, you'll have to unhinge it with that shoulder barge, moving that shield out of the way and then swiping it and unleashing your sword on it. Otherwise, you'll just be toast. And there's so many skills that you unlock that trying to remember them all can be quite a feat. It goes a little like this. 
You unlock dash, okay, I can use this against a zombie and swipe it from behind. Unlock shoulder barge, I can use that against the skeletons with shields and knock that shield out of the way and then swipe it with my sword. Uppercut unlock, sweet, I can use that against bats. Now I need to put all of that together in a fight where the game will combine these enemies and well, you'll become a techno sword wielding samurai, dashing, uppercutting, shoulder barging, shooting your shotgun, and that's just the bloody start. You then have enemies with certain flames above their heads, blue, and you need to unleash your blue flame power, making these easier to kill. But you also can take heavier damage in return if you activate it quite simply with your right analog stick. Then you also have chunks of the sword filled up called the trichoma. You can increase health or you can use your superpowers, which look utterly bloody awesome. And each part of that sword will fill up the more you actually hit enemies, quite simply assigned to a button press. So they're really easy to use too. This game makes full use of the gamepad, that is for sure. And while there is only one weapon, it is the amount of moves and combinations which keeps the battles feeling fresh. There's so many, as I said, cool enemies, the tainted stallions that you'll come across, that the fight sequences are just one part of the game which makes it so damn remarkable to play. Then you have the bossage, which are super fun to play against and they are varied too, they're imaginative and sure, like any other game, you'll work out their patterns, but each has to be killed using a combination of the skills that you have learned. There are parts of the game where you'll need to explore, solve puzzles and platform where you'll use a combination of your uppercut jumps and dashes to reach certain areas. And certain skills will allow you to jump further or break through the floor, which you could previously not do. So certainly have more of a Metroidvania feel to it. There is backtracking, but not a lot. And to be honest, the levels themselves are not large enough for you to get lost. It's all rather compact. And I felt that the design kept things really tight and meant the game kept you moving without you getting lost or stuck, which is what I sometimes hate about large map Metroidvania games. Puzzles make use of symbols, which you have to remember to open up certain areas. So a notepad will come in very handy or just take pictures with your mobile phone. That's even easier. All rather simple, but these puzzles were repeated rather too frequently. I felt needed improvement in terms of the variety on offer. The other is the platforming. While very good, it's not the most challenging and Narita Boy can feel a little bit floaty. You soon get used to it and it didn't detract from my overall enjoyment of the game. I think that's just, you know, the battles, which for me are the clear draw here. And many of you, that decide to pick this up will enjoy what the gameplay has to offer. The thing is, just when you thought you had seen everything, the game surprises you with something completely different to do. Again, I don't want to spoil things too much, but those of you that have seen the trailer will have seen that surfing across the sea with a floppy disk is as cool as it sounds. There is quite a few more awesome things like that that you will come across. Let's talk about the audio. The audio in the game is quite simply sublime. I've often thought about making a game myself and if I had to choose a soundtrack which conveyed excitement, atmosphere and music which took me back to my childhood, then this evoked all of it. Salvinsky, the music composer, has nailed it here. There's something about synth that stirs up, in me anyway, and hits all the right notes. From the moment you hear the soundtrack with the opening song, you'll not be able to stop singing it. Narita boy, Narita boy, that's what you'll be singing. It will be in your head all day. Narita boy, Narita boy. Then you begin and the atmosphere the soundtrack conveys fits perfectly with a digitally created world of computers, motherboards, and in a way, sort of a mythical digital adventure. I was taking there both in the game and in my teenage years through the 80s and early 90s. It hits all of those nostalgic notes too. The sound effects, which the swipe of the sword, the blast of your shotgun, or the sounds of the touching memories you come across all culminates to elevate this already tremendous experience to one which takes it to another level. I've always said that sometimes the difference between a game being fantastic and just good can often be attributed to something which has an awesome soundtrack because it's that which will stay with you and form and evoke those memories later on. Visually, it's utterly brilliant. It's as simple as that. 
Each of the worlds are identifiable simply by the colors on show. For example, the red world will be tinted in red, yellow in yellow, and blue in blue. But it isn't just that which identifies them. Thought has also gone into what the colors represent in the real world. For example, the blue world is based around water. So if you come across a puddle, you'll drown in it, and you'll need a floppy disk to surf across the water to get to other areas. There's so much that, again, evokes memories for me. Floppy disks are used to show new unlocked skills and tutorials. VHS tapes are here too. And again, the design between the digital world and the real world where you see the creator's memories look very good indeed. But then the fluidity I was talking about, the animations are just magical here. The enemies, bosses, and the way they move have been given the sort of dedication and love that you can literally see it pouring out of the screen into your eyeballs. The worlds created have a depth and design which look rather beautiful to me. I love the large heads that you have to walk into when finding that memory. The colors like red, yellow, and blue stand out wonderfully due to the darker backgrounds. The lighting is absolutely absolutely on point. Woven through the game, the tri-color scheme, the creator has woven through it. None more obvious than when you reach the digital kingdom. Looks utterly fantastic. And to me, the idea and design has been executed brilliantly. Frame rates are stable, no crashes, and a joy in either handheld or docked. This is the bar when buying an indie game. There's no excuses for not having a game that runs like this one. In terms of value then, you're looking at around $25 for our friends in the US and in the UK, it's 20 quid. Europe again, 25 euros. Don't even think about how much it is, it's worth every penny. And uh, as I say, a game like this doesn't come along very often. You get around 10 plus hours or so to complete it. That's how long it took me. But again, depends on your skill level. It's not too hard, not super easy either. And once you reach the end, things do ramp up in difficulty. So it's just right. Everyone can enjoy it in either small doses or long batches of play. I couldn't put it down, to be honest, until I completed it. More modes would have been awesome in future. But for now, the quality of the single player experience is what you're paying for here, and it's one that's worth every penny. Now, before I get into my verdict, if you're enjoying this review, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell notification so you don't miss another video. Onto that verdict then, what can I say? Games like this do not come around very often. The name Narita Boy may not sound like anything special, but between me and you, the best things in life are often the things that surprise you. And here, we have a game with a compelling story, which hits harder than I ever expected it to. So much so, that it was upsetting at times, but beautifully told in unlocking memories as the fuel to keep you motivated. Then gameplay, which is fast and fluid and best of all, fun. Narita Boy then breaks things up with nice quick puzzles and exploration with surprises, which made me feel like a kid again. Then you add the absolutely stunning soundtrack and visuals, and this is a game I cannot argue deserves all the praise and accolades coming its way because it's very good indeed. Sure, if I were to nitpick, there are small improvements here and there, but taking it all together, it's a fantastic game and one that you should very much consider adding to your collection. A 9.5 out of 10 from me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much if you're still watching. You're an absolute legend. And so I know who you are. Let's see if you can find the floppy disk emoji. Leave that in the comments down below. I'm now going to put some videos up for you, ladies and gentlemen. One will showcase our bargains that we have every single Sunday. Jordan checks out all the physical releases every single Monday. I'll put that up as well. And I'll also put our mega Metroidvania list up. So hope to see you guys over there. I'll see you again on the next one. Gone crazy. They attack the digital world. What we need is a hero. Save